So we identify the port numbers, but this is more significant for the destination, not for the source. However, have, been, have said that, there are certain applications where there are assigned port numbers for the source. For example, there's something called a network time protocol or NTP. It uses UDP and the port number is 123. 123 for the destination side, but it's also the same port number on the source side, which is also 123. So that's why you want to first identify what are the port numbers for that transport layer protocol, which is TCP, for the application of HTTP. Now, we're pretty much done here. In this particular case, we're just doing another layer, another step. And that is, how does this client communicate with this web server? We know about the connection details. I know it's a, I know it's a TCP connection. I know the port I'm connecting to. And basically, the client access or you know, to the application is I use my web browser, Firefox, Safari, Internet Explorer. So understanding network flows, when you're doing troubleshooting, um, definitely do these exact steps. And that will um, definitely help you there. If something's not working, like you're trying to access an application or something, and something's not connecting correctly, do these exact steps. And that helps you to understand what is the, the network flow that's occurring from the point A, which is the source, to point B, which is the destination. And here is an example that now we place a router in between, um, you know, for this flow, which will usually occur. That the host will be on his own network and the server will be on his own network. So we have a router in between, different interfaces, and basically our examples later on will show how this will be configured with the different types of ACLs. Firewalls. So a firewall is kind of as a kind of as a summary, because I, I think everyone really knows about firewalls. It's a device, or it can be a service, it doesn't have to be a particular device, that can um, specify what traffic is allowed or not allowed through a network. And we can restrict traffic based on a wide variety of things. We can block based on the MAC address of devices, the IP addresses uh, between a source or destination device, which is very common. And more common is you can um, also filter based on the port number, such as blocking, like only allowing port 80 through or port 6778 through, that sort of thing. Or you can um, also use application firewalls where I can block things based on what I see inside of HTTP messages or FTP, even Telnet. So you can um, definitely restrict traffic on a wide variety of things. Um, but basically all firewalls, such as Sonic walls, Cisco ASAs, Juniper firewalls, they're all stateful firewalls. What does that mean exactly? So a stateful firewall means that if a connection is originated inside the network, like it's talking to a website, that the firewall is going to make the appropriate policies to allow that request to come back through. That, ha that is pretty much is the, um, the fundamentals and really the concepts of what a stateful firewall does. If you're configuring a firewall like on a Cisco router, then you have to use very creative access lists such as reflective ACLs or CBAC to um, provide the stateful firewall capabilities. Types of ACLs. So ACL is a type of a firewall service. Hence is why we talked about firewalls in the last slide. So ACLs can come in many different types. It can come as a numbered ACL or as a named. Numbered means we're assigning some number to that access list. It can be difficult to kind of know, like, like for example, access list 101. Well, I don't know what that really um, pertains to. Therefore, you can use a named access list where you can say customer ABC and you can kind of know that that policy is identified for whatever reason or a particular customer. Whether it's a numbered or a named, um, they can come in two kind of flavors, a standard or extended. A standard ACL is very simple and it's the simplest you can get. And it only looks at, it only uses the source IP to make a determination of permitting or denying. It doesn't do anything with port numbers. Extended does so. It can look at the source IP, the destination IP, protocols, ports. It can do a lot more 
granular details for filtering uh, traffic through your network. So there's numbered and there is named. We'll be showing configuration examples for both of these. So configuring ACLs. I worked part of the Cisco TAC, and one of the things I've learned is ACLs are deadly. A lot of people who do networking um, kind of early on, they encounter this issue that makes their heart stop. I want to talk about that in terms of updating the ACLs. Configuring ACLs are not that difficult if you understand network flows. That's why we talked about that first before we got into ACLs. And basically, that is very important. If you understand what is the flow of what should happen from point A to point B, that is all the information you need for configuring your ACL policy. So, but really, when you configure an ACL, there's three major steps. One, you're going to configure your ACL policy based on what you want permitted or to deny. Step number two, you want to confirm the filtering and the directions are correct. You can do things inbound and outbound. Again, with the network flow, you definitely know what is the source, what is the destination, what's coming in, what's coming out. Step number three, apply that ACL policy inbound or outbound to a particular interface of your choice. Let's talk about standard um, ACLs. So a standard ACL for numbered ACLs, for example, would be any number that is from 1 to 99. In terms of numbered, well, it's just any number. Um, yeah, so in terms of number, this is what the syntax will be. You will indicate the access list, then the number of your choice, which would be 1 through 99, then you either will permit or deny. You will reflect what the, IP, the source IP host or even the subnet and the wildcard mask. The name is kind of similar, but we do IP access list, the word standard, and then the name that we want to use. Doing that will put us into another, um, put us into the access list um, configuration mode, which will allow us to do a permit or deny source IP info and the wildcard mask, very similar to the numbered ACL. Now, let's put that information into an example. So, you remember this, this graphic up here. We talked about the network flow here. So, here's what we're doing. Let's say, for example, we want to configure an access list and we're going to apply it to Ethernet 1, which is right here. So, here's how we would do it. And this will be inbound. This is the source talking to this destination, so the flow is coming from left to right. So with that, standard ACLs only look at the source. So for example, I can say I can say access list 10, permit, and anybody on the 192.168.1.0 network. Dot 10 falls into this network. So dot 11, dot 12, dot 20 they will also be um, part of that and they'll be permitted so that will pass through to the other side. Here you see is the wildcard mask and basically this is how you look at it. Zeros reflects to check that portion of the subnet and there's three zeros here. So basically this is saying that uh, check 192, 168, uh, 1 and then 0. 255 which, which consists of all ones